All right, everybody, welcome to this free training called How to Sell Without Feeling Sleazy. You're in the right place if you are wanting to grow your business, you're wanting to double your revenue, you are wanting to grow more than ever in 2024, but you're coming up against some challenges, some challenges with sales, some challenges with marketing. So a little bit about me before we get started. In the past three years of going full-time in my life coaching business, I've created $300,000 selling life coaching and selling speaking. And I want to walk you through how I started because I think it's really important. My first year, I made 27K, 27K. Second year, I made 47K. Third year, I made 75K. And then this last year in 2023, I made 100 and $61,000. Okay. So I'm here to help you if you're in the beginning three to five years of your business. And if you're anywhere like I was, right, if you're sitting at like the 20K mark, it just doesn't feel like it's enough. Right. So what I want to offer today is we've got to sell more, right? Like if you're sitting at 25K, 50K, you're wanting to get to 100K mark, you have to be committed to selling more. And the thing that's getting in the way for you right now is the feelings that come up when you put yourself out there to sell. So I'm going to check the comments really quickly to see what everybody's intentions are. And then I'm going to go into the mistakes that you're making and how to fix them, right? You're going to get a lot of value today. Make sure you're taking notes. And then also I'll send the replay out for the next 72 hours as well. Okay. All right. Hi, Jenny, 2K group looking to get more confident selling. I love it. Sarah says feeling uncomfortable selling myself and my offerings. Yep. Edith says not comfortable doing the bridge. And I have to remind myself all the time that I have to sell. Yes. Okay. So let's just address this. You all know that I'm an intuitive life coach, which means I teach energy. Okay. So remember that when you're out selling, when you're out in the world and you are offering things to people, there's typically a negative connotation in our bodies when it comes to the word selling. Okay. And then remember that our thoughts create feelings and sensations in our body. So for example, I'm just going to use the comment that Edith put in here, which is like, I have to remind myself that I have to sell. So just to set the stage, anytime we have to do something, we don't want to, right? It just comes back from us being like a rebellious teenager. We don't want to do it if we feel like we have to do it. So before we even begin, I want you to consider a reframe. I want you to remember before you had your business, when this was a dream, when you were sitting here going, wow, one day, one day I'm going to be able to do this thing that I love. One day I'm going to be able to help people. One day somebody is going to pay me for this. And in this moment, just take a deep breath and realize your business is a miracle and your gift is a miracle. It's a passion. It, it should bring this heart opening that's like, oh my goodness, this is amazing. I'm so grateful that this is the thing that I get to do. Not the thing I have to do, but the thing I get to do, the thing that I chose, the thing that I've been dreaming about for years. Now, I also want to offer that when we start a business, it is a spiritual expansion. When we start a business, it literally puts us up face to face against all of our biggest limiting beliefs, all of our biggest like pain points whenever we were growing up, right? So if we were too loud or if we were too tall or we were too fat or we were too quiet or we were too shy, whatever, whatever the too much is, it's going to show up for you in your business. And this is your invitation for a spiritual expansion through your business. Okay. So I want to do a couple of reframes as we set the stage for selling. Write this down. Selling is a privilege. Selling is just an invitation to consider 
the solution that you have to offer. Okay, so selling is a privilege and then selling is just an invitation to consider. It's an invitation to consider. And remember, you're selling someone a solution. So I work with people who are coaches themselves. Maybe they do a product or service for someone. So I've worked with musicians. I've worked with artists. They're selling their form of art. I've worked with coaches who are selling the ability for them to help someone transform through coaching. I've worked with musicians, like I said, who are selling music lessons. I've worked with photographers who are selling their creative brain, right? To bring somebody's vision to life. Each one of these things is offering a solution to someone. And all that's getting in the way is your thoughts and feelings, okay? All that's getting in the way is your thoughts and feelings. And the beauty of this is, this is all solvable. This is all fixable and nothing has gone wrong here. If you're coming up against self-confidence issues, if you're coming up against self-doubt, if you're coming up against imposter syndrome, which is like a version of feeling like you're not good enough with which most of my perfectionist clients get into that realm, none of this is actually a problem as long as we can get to willingness, the energy of willingness to show up anyway. So one of the things that my coach helped me with was this thought, you should be able to write your best email on your worst day, Okay. Write your best email on your worst day. So let's start with this foundationally. Your value as a human is infinite. You are infinitely valuable. You are infinitely amazing. You are infinitely perfect just as you are. There's a lot of times where we're trying to heal ourselves and we're trying to get into this deep sense of self-worth and I deserve it. And what I want to teach you is actually your business has a value. The thing that you offer has a transformational value for someone or it's solving a problem for someone. So you can actually sit over here, feel like trash, feel like you're not good enough, feel like you'll never be good enough, and you could still make a lot of money. And I'm teaching you this because this is what I did. This year was my most challenging year. And I made, or this past year, 2023 was my most challenging year. And I made $161,000 because I was willing to feel like trash. I was willing for somebody to give me a check for $9,000. And I was willing for my brain to say, oh, you're not good enough. Oh, you don't know what you're doing. And I was willing to say, thank you for this check. And I put it in the bank. And then I was willing to figure it out as I go along. Okay. So now let's shift into the reasons why selling is important. So a lot of times, right, we think that if we just make our website or we just put it out there or we just make an announcement like, oh, this is what I'm doing. I'm a life coach now or, oh, this is what I'm doing. I offer professional organizing services. We think that we just put it out there that people will come. But I want you to remember that everybody has a human brain and everybody's human brain is very much directed towards saying no. And if you're just thinking evolutionarily, so I have a degree in molecular cell biology. I've studied evolutionary biology. It's very interesting, right? We have our fight or flight brain that wants to protect us. And it just wants to say no to new things. The reason it wants to say no to new things is because our brain thinks doing the same thing keeps us safe. So for example, if you think about a hunter gatherer lifestyle, if you go to the same place and there's food there, We're going to keep doing that because it's going to keep us alive, right? We don't want to go to new places. We don't want to go to scary places because we might fall off a cliff and die, right? So our brains want to say no. So that's the first reason to sell is because human brains just want to say no and human brains just want to be skeptical, okay? The second reason, and this has been proven through marketing is, and this this is probably 15, 20 years ago. So I think the numbers have changed. But if we're looking at 15 to 20 years ago, the data on marketing, right? And marketing is just like, hey, I'm here. Here's the thing I have to offer. Buy it, right? Like, here's the thing. Here's the thing. I'm here. Marketing is like letting people know that you're here. Sales is getting into their brain and answering the question, like, why should you buy this now? Why is now the time? 
and then it's overcoming their objections. Okay. So that's the difference between marketing and selling. But this is what's so important for you to remember is that 15, 20 years ago, the studies were showing that it took 16 touch points. So that's 16 posts, 16 emails, 16 conversations in order for someone to actually buy. Now, I would consider it's probably more like 20 or 25 these days because of the fact that we're always being marketed to, because of the fact that social media is everywhere and we actually have more ads and more information coming to us. So I would consider that it might take 25 touch points, okay? Now, this is really valuable to think about because a lot of people, this is what I see. You're wanting to double your revenue. You're wanting to get to 10K months, right? You're wanting to build a $100,000 business, which a $100,000 business is $8,000 per month. Maybe you're just starting out. You're at zero revenue or you're at like $1,000 monthly revenue. Maybe you're somewhere in the middle. Maybe you're sitting at like $3,000 to $4,000 revenue monthly. And maybe you're getting up there where you're getting up to the 5K and 6K monthly, but you're wanting to double it. You're wanting to, to break that mark of getting over hundred K this, these are the shifts that you want to make. And these are the problems that are getting in the way right now. So the first thing is you're looking for a strategy, like a solution. Okay. And remember when I talked about marketing, there are people out there on social media that are telling you, here's how to get more engagement. Here's how to get more follows. Here's how to do your reels. Here's how to like sell on social media. And so many of my clients, I've seen them focused on the wrong thing where they are focused on, let me get my engagement up. Let me, let me perform for the algorithm. So instead of thinking about their client who has the problem and instead of energetically focusing on their client and opening their heart and thinking about the joy of bringing this solution to their client. They're thinking about how can I perform for the social media algorithm? How can I get more likes? How can I get more follows? And here's what I want to offer. I made $161,000 this year. I only have 3000 followers on Instagram and I only have about 400 people on my email list. Okay. I really want you to hear this because you're thinking the more followers I have, the more podcast downloads that I have, the more visibility, the more people see me, the more money I'll make. And that's simply not true. What's true is when you're focusing on your client, you're feeling them in your heart. You're thinking about the one person today who can benefit from your service. And you're sending out this loving, this loving vibration, right? To say, here's your problem, here's the solution, here's how you can work with me today. And you're doing that every day, over and over again, thousands of different times, because you're understanding that sometimes they're not seeing it on the algorithm. That's okay. Sometimes, you know, people are busy. I always say big people are lazy and busy, right? So they might've saw it, but they forgot to take action. So they need the reminder. And so your ability to continue to show up in thousands of different iterations over and over again is the thing that will create your 8K, your 10K months. Now, what gets in the way of this, right? Like what gets in the way of showing up consistently? Couple of things. Number one, you're afraid of being seen. So like there's something about you that you feel like is wrong. So it's like your voice, your hair, your skin tone, you're too tall, you're too short, you're too fat, you're too thin. Some version of you not being appropriate, of you not being correct, of you not being right, of you not being good enough, right? We all have this. And I remember in the very beginning, I started my, po my first podcast in 2017. And I remember I wanted to start it for like two to three years. But my biggest limiting belief about starting my podcast was I don't like my voice. And it's because like I have this deep raspy voice and I always wanted to sound like more feminine. So I was like, oh, my voice is incorrect. And for a couple of years that held me back from starting my podcast. And I remember this moment, I was having a conversation with a colleague 
And I was like saying that was my limiting belief. But then I was thinking about all the podcasts that I listen to, all the audiobooks that I've listened to, all of the divinely inspired, amazing books and authors and podcasters who have influenced and changed my life. And then I think about what if them not wanting to hear their voice stopped them from putting that information out into the world? What if I never got my transformation because they were so selfish, they were so self-centered that they wouldn't put it out there because they didn't like the sound of their voice. And I transformed my mindset in that moment to say, wow, I'm being so focused on myself right now instead of focused on my vision, on my mission, on one person being transformed by my message. And as soon as that happened, I was able to show up on my podcast, started recording my podcast. You can go find it on Spotify. I've retired that podcast recently. But when I go back and listen to myself, I'm like, that was really good. And the whole time I was judging myself, I was thinking I wasn't good enough. I was like, who am I to teach this? Right. Cause I wasn't making a hundred K yet. I just had a lot of mindset tips and a lot of strategies to share with people. And I'm so proud of myself for showing up, doing the podcast and doing it imperfectly, regardless of what I sounded like, regardless of what I looked like, and regardless of where I was at, right, in my business or in my life. I knew I had information and knowledge to share. All right. The other one we already talked about was like getting in the way of you showing up consistently is your brain, your focus is on engagement and followers. So I touched on this a little bit earlier, but Here's what I want you to do. If there's anybody that you follow that causes you to feel jealous, that causes you to have thoughts like, why do they have more followers than me? Like, I'm, you know, I'm more educated than them, or like, if they could do it, like, why can't I do it? If you're being triggered by anyone, I want you to unfollow them. Okay. If you're looking at their number of followers and like, why do they have 100,000 followers? Like, they started after me. If you're spending any time, in this drama of comparison, unfollow, block, unfriend, unsubscribe, because it is not useful. Your entire energy, when it comes to selling, right? Selling is offering a solution. And so you got to keep your eyes on your own paper. You got to keep your eyes on your own mission. You got to stay focused on your person. And I like to just think of one person, right? I might think of a former client, if you don't have any clients yet, I think of me seven years ago, eight years ago, 10 years ago. I think of the very first personal development book I wrote. And that's how I ended up writing this book. If you didn't know I have a book, self-published on Amazon. It's called It's Happy Now. I wrote it for me about 11 years ago because I was so struggling with perfectionism. I was so struggling with not feeling good enough and happy. And then I decided I want to write a book about being happy now with what we have, with where we're at, so that we can reach the goals. So in that moment, I was focused on my one client, which is myself, not focused on engagement, not focused on who's seeing it, who's liking it, because this is a thought I want to offer you about the world, the energies, okay? The people who are most likely to book a consult with you to reach out to you, to work with you, to pay you money, they're not the ones commenting. They're not the ones engaging. And I'm going to prove this today because I actually have Sarah on who is my one-on-one -on -one client. She came to me from a podcast interview that I did like three years ago. And she just found me on Instagram and she just booked a consult. And then before you know it, we're working together. If I was sitting there going, oh, I wonder like, Oh, who's engaging? Who's, who's following? Are they liking this? Like, is this good enough? It would have taken me out of the energy of service. And then when Sarah came to my Instagram, she'd be like, what is this girl doing? She's like, so people pleasy. She's so like trying to get people to like her. Right. And that wouldn't have been in the alignment of what I'm here to do. Okay. So we got to put our blinders on and ignore engagement. And I'm going to tell you right now what's happening <laughs> probably in your inbox and on your Instagram is you have several ads and several influencers that are, that are popping up on your Instagram feed that are like, here's how I grew my following by a hundred thousand in two weeks. 
and they're trying to sell you on growing your following. I want you to block all those ads, unfollow, delete, because it is not about that. It is focusing about the one person and just continuing to pour value into the world. When you pour value into the world, right? And don't put a lot of pressure on yourself about value because this is the next point. We'll talk about that in a second. We'll talk about perfections in a second. But when you pour value into the world, you're saying, here's the problem. Here's the solution. Let me teach you how to begin even solving your problem before you work with me. It builds this trust. It builds this like, hey, she knows what she's talking about. I know that she can help me. And then that builds the opportunity for that person to eventually reach out to you. Sometimes it happens right away. As soon as they land on your profile, they're like, yep, this is the person for me. They book a consult, they reach out, they send you an email. Sometimes they're following you for three to six months and they're getting up the courage to reach out to you because they're feeling embarrassed or they're having thoughts or they're wondering how expensive it is. Sometimes they're on your email list. They're in your world for three years. This just happened to me. I just signed up for a new program. I've been watching her since 2020 and I've been on her. I bought her like little $37 thing and she kept sending emails and kept selling me things. And I was like, no, 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 I don't want that. I don't want that. I don't want that. And then finally, like she sent an email and I was like, Ooh, I do want that. And I clicked buy now. And now I'm in her program. So she had the consistency to show up to keep solving my problems over and over again. And just so you know, it's a stylist. So I wanted a personal stylist and now I'm in a stylist group and it feels really fun, really exciting for me. Right. So we want to not be thinking about engagement. We want to be thinking about the person who's ready to buy right now. And remember, you just have to imagine them in your mind because you're probably not seeing them in your comments. You're probably not seeing them in your engagement. You're probably not seeing them at all until they pop up in a consult or until they pop up in your email. Then you're thinking about the people who are going to take three to six months to buy and you're just showing up consistently for them so that they can go and get all of this value from what you're offering to the world. And then you're thinking about the person like the long game, right? The person who's going to take a year to buy or there's going to take three years to buy. And you're like, cool, I'm showing up for them too because I want to help them along the way and they'll eventually be ready to work with me right? All right. I'm going to pause here for a second, check the comments. And then we're going to talk about perfectionism and value. Oh, Ufense says, I love your voice. Yeah. Thank you. See, that's so interesting, right? I would have never thought anybody would love my voice. I was just like, you know what? This is what we're going to do. We're just going to do it anyway. All right. So the next thing that gets in the way of you being able to actually sell more is your perfectionism. So when we're talking about sales and marketing, right? We talked about marketing is like, hey, here's my thing. Here I am. See me, look at me. And then sales is overcoming the objections. Like what are all the reasons why people aren't signing up with you today, right? What are the thoughts in their brain that is, that's causing them to not sign up with you today? And I'm just going to give you an example. And I want you to think of your own, your own thoughts. So I want you to think about, and you can type it in the chat if you'd like, I want you to think about something that you've been thinking about buying for a while. And it could be something as simple as like a new mattress or like a new makeup or like skincare. Like it could be something very small or it could be something a little bigger. And then I want you to think about like all the thoughts and questions that go through your mind about buying this thing. So for example, I was considering, I wanted to do some, like, I wanted to learn how to like sing and play music. Okay. I was like, oh, I think I want to sing and play music. And I was following this person and she has this course and it's like $600. So it's not expensive, but it's also not cheap. Like it, it's, it's like, I needed to think a little bit about it. Right. And I have the money. I could do it, but I had a lot of questions. I was, because my thought was, am I actually going to log in and do this course? Cause I'm really good at some courses, but other courses I'm just not good at. And I don't log into them at all. And I just don't do them at all. So I needed to find out like, how do I know that her course is going to be one of the courses that I actually do? And turns out I just never got enough information. So I'm still a no, like I'm still like, mm, I don't know. And it's just because I don't exactly know what the program is going to look like. I don't know exactly what's inside. So I just need to follow her for more. And I need her to answer those questions for me. Right. And I need her to like, tell me like, this is exactly what it's going to be like. This is what you're going to get from it. Here's what's going to happen. All the things. And right now I'm just not sold on it yet. 
So I want you to realize it has nothing to do with her. I'm not rejecting her. I'm not like, oh, she's good enough. She's not a good teacher. I'm like, no, she's like a great teacher. I could definitely learn from her. But I'm just like, is this the right time? Is this the right program? Am I actually going to do it? Like, is it going to be worth it? Like, those are all the thoughts that are going on in my head. So you have to understand that your clients are having the same thoughts all the time, over and over again about your offering. They're wanting to know, is it worth it? Why should I do it now? What's it really going to be like? Is it going to work for me? And your job is to over and 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 over, and over again, answer those questions without making it mean anything about your clients and without making it mean anything about you. So what I see happen here is sometimes we energetically shift into being mad at our potential clients or mad at our audience. I did this for years, so it's okay if it has happening to you too. I used to be so like when I first started my email list was early on, like 2016, 2017, I would be so mad at them because I was like, I was expecting them to like respond to my email and like, tell me I'm doing a good job. And then I would be like, why aren't you buying my program? Like my program at that time, I was selling health coaching. It was like $44. And I was so mad at them for not buying my $44 thing. So then as I'm writing emails, there's this energy of like frustration and anger with them for not buying my thing. Okay. So this happens from time to time, right? We get frustrated. We're like, this is so good. Why would they not buy it? If that happens, we just want to take a deep breath and be like, oh, because they're humans. Their human brain is going to want to say no because they're very busy, because they're very lazy. <laughs> and it's not, it's not a judgment. It's just like the human brain doesn't like to make decisions because it feels hard. The human brain loves to put off decisions. Okay. So if you can just be very neutral about that, like, oh, I'm just dealing with a bunch of people with human brains, with human emotions who have thoughts about time and energy and money, right? So your goal is to continue to show up, to overcome these objections about time, about energy, about money. And your goal is to share with them, this is what my program or this is what my service is. This is what it solves for you. And here's why you want to do it right now today. Here's the very clear action that you can take right now today to get started solving this problem. Here's why you want to do it today. And that's literally what all of your sales content is going to be over and over again, right? So we have to watch when we're, we're, when we're getting judgy about our clients and it's totally fine if, if it happens, but just reset the energy and just realize, okay, there's nothing wrong with them. They just have human brains. They're really distracted. They're really busy and they have a lazy brain. Great. So let me make it as easy as possible for them to work with me, right? And you're giving them all the information, telling them all the reasons, and then you're giving them a direct call to action on what's, what's the next step. How do I start solving this problem? How do I work with you? Okay. All right. So now let's talk about perfectionism and value. So we talked about perfectionism in terms of like appearance, right? Like how I look or how I sound. Perfectionism also comes up whenever you're writing your copy or your content, right? Copy is words on a page that sells people, that compels people to take an action, that gives them information, that tells a story, that solves their problem, right? Copy is something that is designed to inspire them into action, right? And what I see a lot of times is a lot of my clients will have a lot of ideas and they'll be like, oh, I could do all these things. But then they get stuck in perfectionism and overwhelm because they have too many ideas. And then they're trying to make like the perfect post, the perfect email. Like this is the email. This is the one that's going to get me a client today. And they put so much pressure on the marketing or the sales piece that they're doing for that day, that two, thing happen, two things can happen. Number one, they put so much pressure that they don't even finish it. They can't even do it. They can't even like finish the email and write it. So they don't do it at all. Or number two, they spend so much time and energy doing it. And then the whole time they're frustrated, the whole time they're judging, they finally post it or they finally send the email but then they're going back and they're looking at the engagement and they're like, did somebody like it? Did somebody heart it? Oh my gosh, is it okay? And then they might even end up deleting it because they think it wasn't good enough. So what we want to do is remember very simple, basic thought. This is going to be so valuable. So you can write this down. 
a first grader can teach a kindergartner something. So a lot of times your perfectionist brain is thinking, I'm not smart enough. There's people who have been doing it longer. Uh, there's more experienced people. There's more well-educated people than me. There's people who maybe can write in English better, right? If you have English as a second language, there might be a judgment there about how you show up on video, whatever that is. And what I want to remind you is a first grader can teach a kindergartner something. So what this means is, is you have a skill, you have an ability, you have a story, you have a life experience. Even if you're just one step ahead of your client, you have something that can transform their life right now. You have a solution to their problem right now. So you don't need to be perfect. You don't need to be the smartest person in the room. You could actually be kind of dumb. <laughs> Here's why I say this. Um, <clears throat> so I want to offer this. So I'm a life coach. I teach about like emotions, right? I teach about emotions. I teach about processing emotions. I teach about boundaries, communication. And the reason I say like, you can be kind of dumb. You can also be kind of a bitch. Like I'm kind of a bitch. Like in the world, I've had to overcome like being kind of a bitch to people, right? So I'm not a perfect human by any means. Just ask my husband. But I'm good at coaching people. So I don't need to be perfect as a human in order to coach people. I also have my coach who has made $10 million in her business. She is not the smartest person, but she's really good at sales. She's really good at teaching. She's really good at training, but she makes jokes about herself all the time where she's like, I don't even know what that word means. So I want to give that as an example that you don't need to be the smartest, the best, the prettiest, the skinniest, none of it. You just need to know more than your client knows and be willing to share it, okay? So when we talk about value, most of us are putting pressure on ourselves to like create this most valuable thing. And I want you to start considering your copy and what you write down and the videos that you create. I want you to consider that what's inside your brain is extremely valuable. And the value is just getting out what's in your brain onto paper or into video, onto paper, into video, or into a conversation at a networking meeting, right? Just into a conversation, onto paper or into video. That is literally your only job for selling. It's just getting the information out of your brain into the world. You don't get to be the judge of whether it's valuable or not. And I'll give you another example. And I have a great example because Molly is on here and Molly was my one-on-one -on -one client from TikTok. And I started going on TikTok probably about a year ago after my coach was like, go on TikTok, go on TikTok. I was like, no, I don't want to. I don't want another platform. Finally did it because I was like, screw it. I'm just going to try it. And my thought about TikTok was three minutes of my brain is extremely valuable. And my thought was, of course, people are going to want to hear from me. And of course, people are searching for like self-help on TikTok. So I had those three thoughts and that allowed me to show up consistently every day. And I would just do three minute videos my brain was also like, this is some bullshit. Like these videos are not even good. I don't even know what I'm saying, but I was committed to showing up every day, getting the stuff in my brain into a video. And then what do you know it? Molly was scrolling one day. She found one of my videos and she was like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. And I, my brain was like, really? This is trash. This is like the worst thing I've ever made in my life. Right. But because I was committed to get my brain out into the world and it was like, two to three minutes, Molly saw it and was like, that's really great. I, I need to know more about it. I need, to, I need to figure out how I can work with you because I solved a problem for her and her business and I helped her see what was going on in her mind. And she was like, oh my gosh, I didn't even know that was my problem. So I want to offer that your trashiest trash can get you clients. And that has been my TikTok experience. I think I've, I've signed maybe like 15 to $20,000 off of TikTok from what I would consider to be very trash videos. Like they're just like, whatever. They're just like throwaway videos. But because the information I'm putting out there is valuable and because the algorithm is just putting it out there and because I believe that there's 8 billion people in the world and if just half of them were looking for a life coach and maybe if just half of them were looking for somebody to help them in their business and maybe only 10% of them worked with me, that's still a $2 million business for me. So when I'm thinking about making a three minute trash video, I'm thinking about $2 million business, All right?
All right, so let that land, let that settle for a little bit. All right, how is this landing with you? Go ahead and type it in the comments below. And then we're gonna do the next one. <clears throat> so the next one is, so we talked about sales and marketing, which is like putting yourself out into the world, right? So it's email, it's social media, or it's networking. It's like going out into the world, meeting the people, letting them know like, hey, this is what I do. This is how I do it. This is how you can work with me, okay? That's the sales and marketing piece. And mo mostly that's like the marketing piece. And the sales piece is like, here's why you want to reach out to me today. Here's why you want to get started today. Here's why you want to buy my thing. Like, here's the link to do it, right? There's your call to action there. And there's an overcoming objections in your copy and in your content and in your videos, right? So there's the courage to call out the objections and overcome the objections in your copy and in your content. That's the first piece. The second piece that I see people, this is where the sleazy part comes in, right? All of you are here because you want to sell without feeling sleazy. And the thing that's in the way is that you're afraid to overcome objections face-to-face, -face, right? And face-to-face -face means like on a consultation call, or maybe it means on a recorded video, or maybe it means like directly in your copy and in your content. And the reason you're afraid of overcoming objections is a couple things. First thing is, you make it mean something about you, where it's like, they didn't like me, they rejected me. It confirms all of my worst fears, which is I'm the worst human being, nobody loves me, right? Like it gets into that, like, I'm not good enough, I'm not lovable. And it gets into this like rejection and disappointment, okay? So we're avoiding feeling rejected, we're avoiding feeling disappointed. So then we don't even want to have any face-to-face -face sales conversations because we don't want to feel rejected and disappointed. Okay. So there's that. Then there is, you've all had an experience, a sales experience that felt bad to you, right? So maybe you bought a car, maybe you went into a clothing boutique and the people were like trying to get you to buy extra things. Maybe you've done a sales call with someone that made you feel icky. And you're like, I don't want to be the person who does that. Okay. I understand completely. I understand because I've been in like, like sales situations that did not feel good to me. But I also want to remind you of sales situations that feel really good. So I'm going to give you this example. So I, when I was 19 years old, I moved from Pennsylvania, which is like the East coast, like country, cornfield country to San Diego, California, which is like beach surf town. Right. And I moved there right after college. Well, actually in the middle of college and I got a job at a surf shop. And so I'm 19 years old. I came from landlocked country bumpkin cornfield USA. And all of a sudden I'm in the center of like the coolest place the coolest place in the USA, I think. Molly might disagree. She might think New York is the coolest, but I think California is the coolest. Coolest place in the USA. And I'm I'm in a surf shop learning how to sell surfboards, skateboards, and snowboards. In my 19 years of life, I've never had any experience on a surfboard, on a skateboard, or on a snowboard. So how did I learn how to sell something? I didn't even know what it was. I didn't have any experience with it. What I did was educate myself on the product. And then I educated myself on the experience that I was selling, right? So I was selling the experience of being on a mountain, of being on a snowboard. I was selling the experience of like having all the cool gear, like the snowboarding gear and the boots and the bindings. And like, I was selling the experience of having like the proper board, depending on what type of, of, of adventure sport experience that you were looking to have. So all I needed to do was sell myself on the experience and then I could sell people a surfboard. I could sell them an $800,000, $900,000 surfboard, $1,300 surf. Uh, I remember I sold like a $1,300 package that was like a total snowboard package. And so I want to offer that when we're selling, we're selling them the experience and the outcome and we're selling them on the desire, the desire of getting what they want. 
So it could just be, I want to have fun on the mountain. And for me, like I'll, I'm willing to spend $2,000 on all my gear and the, the, the ticket and all the things I'm selling them on that experience. So I want you to understand that it's okay that you might've had like a sleazy selling experience, but I want you to go back to what's a valuable sales experience that you've had. What's a time where you're like, oh my gosh, that was like the best purchase. And it was the most fun for me to buy that thing. Or I got the most value out of it, right? Like maybe it's a mattress, maybe it's a car, maybe it was a house. Maybe it was just like buying a new shirt where you're like, I got the $48 shirt instead of the $20 shirt. And tap into the experience you had where you got your desire filled by the sales experience, okay? The only reason the sleazy selling happens, you feel it and then your client feels it or you felt it as the client is because the person who was selling you was thinking about themselves and they were thinking about their sales goal. And then there was pressure put on you and there was usually like an intensity that you didn't love feeling, okay? So let's just take a deep breath and release that because when you're thinking about your worst sales experience as you're going out to sell, that's what's gonna come up in your body. So we want you to think about your best sales experience and about how fun it is to buy things. And I don't know about you, but I love shopping. I've always loved shopping retail. I love clo- like clothing. It's so fun for me. So I love retail. I love selling like that excitement. Okay. All right. Now, even those of you who are kind of tight and stingy with your money, I know I have at least one of you on here. We've done our, our call that says like, Hey, like I just do not like spending money. I want you to consider like the first thing that you find value when it comes to money. So like for people who don't love spending money, typically they love having a house or they love having like a reliable vehicle that they don't have a car payment on. So I want you to think about like the things that you will spend money on and why and start to coach yourself into like, oh, even me, even if I don't like love shopping or love buying, there are still things that feel really important for me to have and that I'm willing to spend money on, right? Okay. Now let's talk about overcoming objections in the consult, right? So when you're there having the conversation with them, the process that I teach inside my program is spiritually aligned selling, which starts with number one, being able to process your own fear separate from your sales conversation. So if you're having fear about paying bills, if you're having something coming up in your life, if you're having money drama, then we want to actually set aside time in your day to where you're processing your fear before you get on a call, before you get on a consultation, before you have a conversation with anybody about any sales, okay? So we want to clean up our own fearful energy around money. Then secondly, we want to get into our purpose and our connection. So the way this feels in your body energetically is your heart is open. And I'm an intuitive reader and I work with a lot of people who are intuitive. You don't need to be intuitive to work with me. But if you are intuitive, if you want to think of it this way, it's just an energy thing. So when we're having a sales conversation, we want our heart to be open so that we're connected to the other person. And yet we want to be detached enough so that that person doesn't feel the pressure to buy from us. So we're still going to tell them all the reasons to buy. We're still going to help them through any of their own mind drama. We're still going to understand that their brain wants to say no. When we know that their brain's lazy and we know that their brain's easy to, easily distracted and it doesn't like making decisions, right? So we're still going to do the work to offer all of the data, all of the information, all of the why now, like why to do this now. And we're going to sit with all of that. We're going to give them everything with an open heart. And we're going to be detached because we know the universe is abundant. Like I said, there's 8 billion people. We know there's a thousand more people out there. So yes, we want to help this person. We want to serve this person. We want to work with them. We want to offer them our solution. And also it's okay if they walk away as a no. So it's this open-hearted connection that also allows space for a detachment which is like, yes, I would love to work with you. You're amazing. I could totally help you. Here's all the reasons why. And it's totally okay if you don't. If you're a no, totally fine. 
I'm not going to get upset about it. It's not going to be about me. Not a big deal. Okay. This is just a practice over time. And I teach you this inside of my course. I teach you spiritually aligned selling because it's just an energy, right? Of being willing to sit in this open-hearted detachment. Then the other thing that's important, and a lot of people get this wrong, right? Especially when you see, when you literally see used car salesmen on uh, a commercial, you see them like leaning forward, yelling and be like, come on down, buy it now. And they're like hyper. You don't need to be hyper to sell. So if you're an introvert, you don't need to worry about being an extrovert. You can be exactly who you are right now today. What we're looking for in a sales situation is calm, grounded energy. Just very certain, very calm, very still. And you would feel this energetically in your root chakra. You would feel very grounded, very present. It's what I teach in spiritually aligned selling. Meditate. Before this call, I was meditating. I was laying on the ground, right? A lot of times we're taught to hype ourselves up. We don't want to hype ourselves up in this situation. We want to be calm, connected, certain, sufficient, and in the energy of I'm enough. And no matter what's in your bank account today, like what I have is enough. So we're not ever putting pressure on our clients to buy so that we can pay our bills. Okay. That is spiritual alignment with the universe saying, I know I'm going to be supported. I know this is going to work out. I know the universe always supports me. And it's not on this person who's sitting in front of me to pay my bills. Okay. So this is what comes up for you guys. A lot of time is you're thinking, I don't want to ask people for money. You're never asking people for money. You're always offering them a solution. And then you're offering them. Here's all the, here's all the ways this solution is going to help you. Here's the value of the solution. And then here's the price. And then their brain is going to be going, okay, is the value of this solution in alignment with the price? And their brain is always most likely, I'm going to say 98% of the time, their brain is always going to be like, I can't afford it. It's too expensive. No matter what. Remember when I was selling something for $44, people still didn't buy it. So it's never about the price. It's always about communicating the value. And then when their brain says, ooh, that's a lot of money, that's expensive, you're still in that calm energy. You're like, yeah, I understand. Like, yeah, this is a decision. Let's talk about it. And you're being willing to talk about their the things that are going on in their brain without you shutting down and running away, okay? So another way that I taught one of my, I had another client who is a medium. And so obviously she connects to other realms, other dimensions. She can call, she can bring through information from another dimension. She does that energetically through meditating, essentially through connecting. And so what I offered to her is all that's happening when you're on a consult is you need to be willing to sit with the energy of their fear and their scarcity without it triggering your fear and your scarcity. That's why you come to the call grounded, certain, connected. You leave all your money drama elsewhere and you're fully present with them to go through their thoughts of scarcity and fear and not enoughness. And then in that moment, you're just holding space for their thoughts, but you're speaking to what's available for them, right? Because every single human brain wants to stay the same and fear wants us to usually go backwards. It wants us to hide, run and hide. So when you're having a conversation about what's possible for them, you're saying, yeah, of course, this is going to feel scary. It's not a problem. And here's what's available for you if you choose to make this investment. Here's what's available for you, right? It could be like, it could be as simple as like a, a, a renovation of your bathroom, right? It's a big amount of money. A lot of people are renovating their houses because the value they receive from it. Same thing with your service. There's a value. And you just have to be willing to sit long enough to discuss the value. So I teach all of that in the consultation process, but simply just considering separating your own fear from their fear is going to go leaps and bounds. And then being willing to sit for a longer amount of time while they're making their decisions. Most clients I see when you're first doing your consults, you're running away at the end of the call, like, okay, I'll send you, a, I'll send you an invoice. Bye. And you just hop off the call. And we want to sit there with them for 15 or 20 minutes as they're pondering their decision and help them get all the information they need to make a clear decision and move forward today. 
Okay. There's a value of decisions being made. And the reason this is really important is because the longer we go without making a decision, the more time we waste and the longer it takes for us to get the result that we want. This is true for every industry. Okay. Not just life coaching industry, true for every industry. The longer you put off getting your new bathroom, the longer you're going to have with like shitty tile on the floor. And the longer you're going to wake up and look at the floor and be like, this is so gross. I hate my house. Right. Just, just do it. Why, why should they just do it today? Okay. That's the thing that you're offering whenever you are sitting with their objections. Okay. So now let's talk about the solution. So we talked about all the things that are getting in the way. I talked about some of the solutions, but I want to break it down to like the commonality is the people I work with, perfectionists, high achievers, you want to do a good job. You want to be in integrity. And so there's this energy of, of wanting to be perfect. And there's this energy of not enough. So there's not enough money. There's not enough time. You're not good enough for some reason. And that's what's driving your sales and marketing is like this energy of not enoughness. So what I want you to do, this is the solution, is to focus on how is everything enough? How is the current amount of clients you have enough? How is the current amount of money you have enough? And I'm going to offer this to you because you probably have a thought like, well, that's easy for you to say because you're imagining me with like $100,000 in my bank account, right? A year ago, I had a negative bank account. I had like negative $200. I had a bunch of clients. I, I had not sent a client in nine months. I was eating rice and beans. I was having to like ask my husband like, hey, can you give me a little bit more money for groceries? I was using up all of my husband's savings and he had to say like, hey, you can't use my savings anymore. Like we will have no more savings. It was so painful. And also I reached this place of enoughness in meditation. I'm sitting there going, how is my negative bank account enough? How am I enough? Even though I haven't signed a client in nine months, how is my husband enough? Even though he's mad at me right now, how is everything in this moment enough? And I reach, this is why I call this spiritual selling, right? This is a spiritual practice. I reach this level of vibrational enoughness in my meditation. And I just cried with gratitude where I was like, I'm just alive. And like, I have this experience and I inside of my body, I can create this vibration of enoughness despite what's going on in my life. And I walked out of that meditation space. I walked out of that yoga room feeling vibrationally like everything is fine. I am so supported. Like the most valuable thing in my life is to be able to access this state of inner peace. And I walked out floating on a cloud and I just believed everything's working out for me. It's enough. I'm okay. I'm fine. And then within 30 days, I had $25,000 back in my bank account. Okay. And all the things I was doing was the same, right? I was showing up, I was selling, and I just had a different belief and I just had a different vibration. So this is the energy. This is the solution that we have when we're going out into the world and doing our sales and marketing is this vibrational harmony with enoughness, with that source energy, with whatever it is that you believe in, but it is simply an energy and a feeling that we can carry in our body. So when you are in alignment, people can feel it right? They, you will never feel sleazy when you're in alignment. Somebody else is not going to feel pressured from you when you're in alignment, when you're in this energetic alignment, it's going to feel like you're just so blessed to be having a conversation with this person. You are so blessed to be able to have a free social media marketing platform that reaches billions of people. Like you will just feel like things are easier. You'll feel more motivated. You'll feel inspired. And when you're focusing on your spiritual growth, your spiritual development, this internal state of alignment, people will be attracted to you and they will start reaching out to you. So you won't feel like you need to reach out to people. You won't feel like you need to get that engagement. They're going to start reaching out to you because you're so clear on your energy. You're so clear on the problem and the solution. And you're consistent because you literally feel like every day is a gift. You feel compelled when you're thinking about that one person and you want to continue to show up because of your mission, because of your heart, because of it being open. 
So let's talk about the skills to get here, right? It's like, okay, spiritual enlightenment. These are the skills that you need. What I teach is called the pain to purpose process. And this is dealing with your fear. We're all going to have money fears. It's fine. They don't ever go away. That's what I want to offer to you. My millionaire clients still have money fears. So all we need to do is learn what to do when the fear comes up. So I teach this process called pain to purpose, and you can use it every single day if you need to, or you can just use it right before you're about to get on a consult. And it gets you into this vibrational state of connection and thinking about your client and not thinking about your money worries, right? The other thing, money mindset rituals. So there are things that you're doing right now in your life that are causing you to think and feel a certain way about money. So I teach you money mindset rituals that you can use daily, weekly, monthly. They can be ceremonial or they could be very simple with just like creating affirmations and putting affirmations on your phone. But the value is in the consistency of doing these money mindset rituals over and over again. So you're helping to feel more abundant about your financial situation. Okay. Next, you need to learn your common confident consultations, right? Like actually doing your spiritually aligned selling in a calm and connected way. Then we learn to always celebrate. Always. Okay. So you're going to have in the beginning a lot of no's. A lot of failures, a lot of people be like, not show up for the consult or tell you they don't, they can't pay right now. And so we have to learn how to celebrate our progress while we evaluate, right? Like what worked in this process? What didn't work in this process? And I teach shame-free evaluations, right? Because perfectionist, the thing that gets in our way is shame. We don't want to feel bad about ourselves. We don't want to feel rejected. We don't want to feel like we're not good enough. And the way for you to get better is to be willing to see what went wrong in a consultation in a way that feels very empowering to be like, wow, I see the thing I could have said. This is what I'm going to say next time. And I just had a client voice memo me last night where she's like, I finally get it. She had such a bad disappointment. Somebody said no on her consult. And because she had such a bad disappointment, she cried about it. She felt her feelings, but she did an evaluation. She did her celebration. She just signed two more clients as a result of being willing to feel her feelings and then figure out what she was going to do next and move forward. So we got to learn how to overcome failure by feeling our feelings. And I call this mastering your emotions. So I teach this to my clients with EFT tapping, with visualization, with breath work, all of which is included in my group program, which I'll tell you about in a little bit. And then finally, like this is really important too. And I say this as last because it's important, but your mindset's most important, right? Your mindset and your energy is most important. And then the way that you sell in marketing is most important. But here's the other thing that's hugely important. Being able to run a spreadsheet and run your projections so that you can determine how is it that I'm going to make 10K a month in my business? What are my price points? What's my conversion? What does my business look like in the next three years? What am I going to, how am I going to save this money? What am I going to do when I receive a large amount of money? So a lot of times what's getting in the way of us making more money is we don't trust ourselves with money. We don't trust ourselves as a CEO. As women, we're told we don't make the money decisions. Typically the guys are making it. So it is becoming that CEO business owner. So you're not just the coach. You're not just the practitioner who's offering your service. You're not just the intuitive. You're not just the medium, right? This is what transformed my client who's a medium. She saw her identity as a medium. I'm, I connect, I'm a medium, that's what I do. And we had to shift her identity into, I'm a business owner who sets financial goals and I'm a salesperson, but I do it in a spiritually aligned way that feels really good for me and really good for my clients. So we teach you how to set actual business revenue goals and then go after them. Because this is what I see with people. They either don't set a goal because the goal causes a lot of drama. They're like, oh no, I'm just going to like talk to people this month. Or they set a, a goal that's too high or they set a goal that's too low. So we need to assess your relationship with your goal and allow it to bring up a lot of drama because that drama is there anyway. 
So we need to start talking about money and coaching through all the things that come up when you set goals and what comes up when you're in the middle of a launch or you're in the middle of sending your emails or you're in the middle of a video or a consultation and you're having fear. What then? Right? So we need to start planning for profit and getting really confident and really clear on what to do with our money whenever it comes in. All right. So that that is it. These are the five things that are going to help you as a review. In order to double your revenue and sell more, you need to learn spiritually aligned selling, right? You need to learn how to market in an easy way that shows up very consistently. You can just do it every day consistently. You need to learn your money mindset rituals. You need to learn how to manage your emotions, right? So that you can actually pick yourself up after failure. And then you need how to learn to plan for your profit. Those are your five secrets. That is the class, okay? So I know a bunch of you got some nuggets. You can type them in the chat. What are your takeaways? What are your nuggets? But now I wanna talk about my group. Some of you are here. You're already in my group. I love it. Some of you are here. You're already my one-on-one clients. I love this as well. Super excited to get started with you. But I also want to review everything that comes with this program. And this is where your biggest transformation happens, right? I want you to have some takeaways from today, but transformation happens with repetition, practice, and coaching on your mindset. So my course is called Permission to Profit. It is a six-month group coaching course, which means we are going to meet 20 times over six months. Our first call is on January 30th, 2024. Okay, so you can mark your calendar for that. I'm going to talk to you about everything that goes into this program. And I'm going to answer any questions you have about sales, about marketing, or about the program itself. So as you have questions come in, you can go ahead and type them in the chat. But I want to give you a broad overview of what to expect from the program. So here are the results you can expect in six months, okay? And I want to offer this to you. I want to tell you the price. And I want to offer the value that's included in this program. So some of you know, I invested $25,000 this year into a mastermind to learn sales and marketing. Before that, I invested about $10,000 in another program to learn selling on video and learn webinars. Before that, I invested about 6 k into a mindset coach to teach me how to make 10 k months. So if we're looking all in, just the value of this program I'm offering you is $30,000, over $30,000 that I've invested to learn these skills. And I've decided to make this entirely accessible for you so that you can make your money back and then double your revenue. So the program is only $4,000, $4,000, one-time payment, or you can do the payment plan, which is $1,000 down and then $680 a month, okay? This program should be $10,000, quite honestly, and it might be one day, but right now it's $4,000 and here's what you get. So wherever you're at right now, you can double your revenue. So if you're at 2,500, double it. 5K, double it. 10K, we wanna get you to 10K so that you can get to $100,000 in your business. You are going to learn how to feel secure in what to do with new money. So a lot of times we don't trust ourselves with money, so I'm gonna teach you what to do with new money. You're gonna learn the sales process to sell without feeling sleazy. We are going to undo your perfectionism, right? So when you have perfectionism habits come up, You're going to learn how to get unstuck and move forward so you can be consistent. You're going to learn how to sell to different money archetypes. So there's different personalities out there that care about different things. And you're going to learn how to sell strategically to those different types of personalities. You're going to learn how to use your own money personality to align with your best clients, the ones that are going to be the best ones for you to work with. You're going to learn how to create a three-year plan to create $100,000 in your business. You're going to learn how to do easy, easy, simple social media marketing so that you are not overwhelmed anymore. This should not be a problem at all. It should be so easy to show up and create content and copy that converts, right? So remember, we're not making content for the algorithm anymore. We're making it for our clients to solve their problem. You're going to learn how to use your mind to make more money. That is how this is happening. It's all just thoughts. You're going to learn daily manifesting tools. So what are the things that you need to do daily in order to get your mindset right so that you can show up and sell to your people to sell and market? 
You're going to learn to balance masculine and feminine energy. Okay. So for example, some of you are very hustly. I want to do all the things. I want to do all the things. I want to work, work, work. I want to figure it out. I want to know how. And you're finding yourself in burnout or you're finding yourself doing too much and you're finding yourself like I'm working all the time. That's masculine energy. We want to balance that with feminine energy. Feminine energy is like everything's always working out for me. I believe I receive. I trust my vibe. And we balance both of them so that we're not overworking, but we're also just not sitting in our house meditating all day, right? We're actually taking some actions, but we're doing the least amount of work to make the most amount of money. You're going to learn how to manifest on vacation. I'm going to give you an example of this right now. So I went to Prague last July. And I'm not going to lie. I was freaking out about leaving my business. I was like, I can't leave. I can't leave. Like I need to sell. I need to sell. Cause I had been make, I had making for this $25,000 investment. So I had these bills to pay. Right. And I just decided, you know what? I'm trusting. I'm shutting down my business for a week. I'm going to Prague and I'm going to frolic around Prague the whole time. Just feeling like I make 20 K. Like I'm just a person who makes 20 K there's 20 K in my bank account. And I just decided I was going to do that and feel it and be it and just be with it. Okay. I did that the whole time I was in Prague. Now, some circumstances came up. My husband and I had to have this conversation about how much I spent on dog boarding. And he was like mad again about how much I spent and like all these bills I had. So I had a moment where I was like, oh shit, like I don't have 20K in the bank. What do I do? And also I showed up, I held the belief all of June. I went to Prague. I had the best time. We had an abundant experience there, even though my bank account was getting really, really low. And then guess what happened again? That next month, I had 20K in my bank account. So it came from the experience I had in Prague, my belief, and then that went into my actions. You can manifest things on vacation. All right. Next thing you're going to learn is to overcome imposter syndrome. Imposter syndrome is not a problem. It just means that you have big goals and you're going after the goals. That just means your brain is going to tell you, hey, you're not good enough. This is scary. We're like, cool. It's not a problem. I know exactly what to do. I know how to get over this. You're also going to learn to stop people pleasing. So some of you need to like get your family out of your emails, get your family off of your social media because you're worried about what they're thinking. We only want to be thinking about our clients. Okay. So you're going to stop people pleasing. You're going to stop undercharging, right? And undervaluing yourself. You're going to learn how to double your revenue, sell without feeling sleazy, market yourself the easy way, manage your money mindset, and create your three-year profit plan. All right. Who is it for? So I like to talk about who is this for? It is for ambitious spiritual entrepreneurs. And when I say spiritual, this is not religious. Spiritual is just an energy. So if you're a person who wants to feel a better energy in your body, you want to feel inner peace, you want to feel calm, you want to feel confident, you want to feel connected. You want to have an open heart. That's what we're going to have in this program. The reason why I created this program is because I see too many people teaching strategy, strategy, sales, sales, and it feels very hustly and it feels very exhausting. I want you to be able to grow spiritually with your business and feel like you are in a partnership with your business to where you want to wake up every day. You feel compelled. You feel like you are getting an equal exchange energetically even before the money comes, you are feeling connected to your business in that way. This is where people typically in the first five years of your business. So your revenue is probably in between 10K, 20K, 50K, and you're wanting to get to consistent 10K months. Like it would be your dream if you can sell 10K in a month. You're heart-centered and you have a service-based business. And I just talk about service-based businesses is because typically you have a lot of thoughts about yourself, right? Like when I was selling surfboards and snowboards, they weren't rejecting me. But when we have a service, a lot of times we feel it deeper because we're like, oh, they're rejecting me as a human. And so I want to help you overcome that feeling of rejection and fear and disappointment. And then of course, this is going to be focused on selling, mostly about selling and mostly about having conversations with people and helping them make a decision on your service that's probably expensive. So it's totally okay if you have something that's expensive, it's valuable. And we can totally work with them and help them overcome their objections in their own mind in order to show up, in order to be a yes. And you want to have consult calls that feel like a win, that feel good to you. 
it feels like a win-win, right? It's not about getting a client. It's simply about connecting and offering value and just helping as many people as you can, right? So again, it's $4,000 pay in full. If you want to go take a look at it right now, you can go to your email because you got an email reminder. The link is in there. You can go to permission to profit.group. You can go and sign up there right now. You can sign up on the payment plan or you can sign up for pay in full. Or if you want to have a conversation with me and you want to get specifics, you have questions about your business, you can book a consult with me. And even if you don't say yes to the program, I tell everybody this, it's going to be the best consult of your life because you'll be able to get value from the consult. We'll review your business, we'll review your plan, we'll see what's getting in the way. Then you can make a decision if you want to join the program. But some of you are having like trauma about a sales experience that you've experienced before and you don't even want to talk to anybody on a sales call. So we want to clean that up because my sales calls are different. They feel really good and it helps you to see what's possible for you. Okay. All right. So you can book a consult or you can sign up right away. And our first call is on January 30th. All right. I'm going to check the chat for questions. And then I'm also going to review the other things that are included. All right. Sarah says two pages of notes. This is great. Thank you. You're welcome, Sarah. I love it. Cool. Edith says, thank you. See you in a couple hours. I love it. All right. Edith hopped off because we have our first bonus group coaching call for our program today, actually. All right. So here's what else is included in the program. These are like the tangible. So some of you have a lot of questions on like the specifics. Some of you have never coached before. So I want to talk to you about what coaching is. We have 20 coaching calls over six months. So what that looks like is we typically have three coaching calls a month with one week off. One week off is what's known as your implementation week. Implementation week is whenever, whenever we would normally have our coaching call, you're going to take that hour of time and implement. So maybe you want to do a webinar. Maybe you want to record content. Maybe you want to write your emails. Maybe you want to go to a networking event. That gives you the capacity to put something on your schedule that week and have accountability for it when we meet the next time around. So the main component of group coaching is you being able to come to the call with your specific challenge. Here's what's going on in my marketing. Here's what's going on in my sales. Here's what's going on in my brain. Here's what happened the last consult that I had. Here's a problem I'm having. I'm going to coach you on that. And those calls go in a recording. So the beauty of being in a group is that you're going to see other people get coached. You're going to see them come to the call with their problems. And something that's so amazing is the ability to watch somebody else get coached because sometimes you can even pick it up even better when you're watching somebody else. And then you have access to the replays so that if you can't make the call for whatever reason, or if you need to write in your question, I can answer your question on the call. So the calls will be part teaching and then part coaching. So the teaching is kind of like what I did here today, right? I'm giving you a topic. I'm saying, here's how you do it. Here's the thoughts. Here's your homework. And then if you have coaching on what you've applied, or if you have coaching, on thinking about going out into the world and doing it. I coach you on that thing. Okay. All right. Ufense says, I can testify the consult with Cami was the best sales experience of my life. Thank you. That so good. Sarah says, I agree. She addressed all my concerns with no pressure and no attachment. She sold me the value without overselling or pushing me. Oh, Sarah. She says, you've been very worth it so far. Thank you, Sarah. I love this. Okay. Let's, let's address all the things that are included. And if you guys have any more questions about sales, marketing, consults, drop them in the comments below as well. I'll stay here for about 10 more minutes and then we'll wrap up. So here are the bullet points of what's included in the program. And these are the fun things that have allowed me to create 300K. And these are the things that have allowed multiple people, multiple clients to go out and create 10K, 16K double their revenue. Maybe they were starting at a thousand and now they're at 2,500. I had my client, I talked about her, my client, Deb, who's a medium. She started with me working part-time, making $24,000 in her job, hated it, wanted to leave it, but she didn't feel like she was really ready yet. Excuse me. I'm just still recovering from my cough that I had last week. By the time we were, so in the beginning, she was making probably like $500 or $600 a month. She wasn't even really sure because she wasn't tracking her money. By the time we were done working together, she was making $5,000 a month. She had, had been on podcast interviews. 
She had been part of a book that got published. She had been invited to be a part of this group that goes live every single Sunday. She got her own physical office and she quit her job. Okay. These are all the things that are possible for you. She's such a good example. And here are some of the things I worked with on her. And this is what's included in the program. (coughs) The first one, I call this the 10K pay and play plan. So a lot of times when we're thinking about making more money, we're thinking about bills, we're thinking about debt, we're thinking about all the things we need to pay off. That is not a good strategy. The reason why is because it comes from scarcity. So the 10K play and pay plan focuses on play. The goal here is you take 10K, you play with it in your spreadsheet or you play with it in your notebook and you decide like, here's all the fun ways that I would spend my 10K. And it has nothing to do with debt. It has nothing to do with paying off the house or the car, unless that lights you up. For some of you that lights you up, but I think for some of you, the only reason that lights you up is because you've been living in scarcity for so long. And the only thing that you've been taught is you need to pay off debt. You need to pay off debt. You need to pay off debt. And what I teach you is, no, we need to learn how to make more money. When we have more money, that solves a lot of our problems. So I teach you to get in the energy of having 10K and then exactly what you would do, how you would play with that money. Next thing, I don't believe in budgets. I think budgets are restrictive. So I do not use the word budget. I think it carries an energy. So instead, I give you the cash allocation spreadsheet. You have a cash allocation plan, which is a way for you to track your cash flow and then decide here's where my cash is going to go. And you learn strategically where to put your cash, how much to invest, what your expenses should be, what you should set aside for taxes. All of that is like CEO energy, right? In a calm, confident, abundant way. Next thing, I give you manifesting morning routines and I have videos and audios for this. So videos and audios for what you can do in your morning, what you can do in your evening routine, and then I have audios to reset your energy at any time. So some of this is EFT tapping, some of it's meditation, some of it's Reiki energy, some of it's visualization. These are all the tools that I've used in the past three to four years of my business to create this calm energy in my body, which is the thing that helps you sell. Then I have the bedtime prophecy plan. This is a strategy I used pretty much the last three years. This this last year, like exclusively. I used it before bed every single night and it helped me to align my brain, right? To hypnotize myself into making $161,000, into believing it's possible. So there's something that we do specifically every night before bed in our journal that allows you to create And this happened to me too, where I did this at night and a consult was booked overnight whenever I did it. So this stuff is powerful. All right. Your next one is your aligned selling strategy. So this is how to get yourself into alignment, right? Your spiritual selling. So you can either use spiritual or you can use aligned, whatever word feels better for you, but it's the process to get into energetic alignment before you're about to get onto a consult. This is going to be really huge, really important. And then what do you do after the consult when you're feeling some type of feelings, okay? The next thing is you get your money mindset workbook. So this is a place where you go to put all of your money mindset information in. This is what you use. This is what you use to manifest. So you can also call this your manifestation workbook. You're also going to learn business structure and boundaries. So this has to do with time management and this has to do with what are you using your time on? A lot of you are using way too much time to create content instead of using your time to think about your client and offer solutions for your client. So we want you to have solutions focused whenever we're thinking about your content and your copy. I'm going to teach you really easy social media systems, the ones that I use. You don't need to batch your content. So remember, this is not one size fits all. So you don't need to batch your content. You don't need to use a scheduler. You don't need to have six months of content planned out. You're going to create a way that is simple for you to show up. So I always teach the bare minimum. What's the bare minimum we can do to get the biggest result? You're also going to get sales psychology and strategy. So this comes from, I took a course on this and I've been learning this for the past three years, but there are specific psychological ways to say things that are important and A lot of people use this in like a very manipulative way, right? And I teach like the, there's the bro marketers out there. That's like, 
push on their pain points. That's not what I teach. We don't want to push on anybody's pain point. What we want to do is create the vision. So we create the vision of what's possible for them, which feels expansive and it feels like people want it. And that is what we're using in our psychology and in our strategy. And then lastly, and most importantly, managing your emotions. So this comes with live coaching. There's going to be a time where you come to the call and you're having a meltdown. I always tell my clients, we think that business is going to be like a miracle, like running a business is just a miracle. Well, what it really is, is a multitude of mini meltdowns and with moments of miracles. So you're going to come to the call with your mini meltdowns where you're feeling emotional. And I'm going to be able to give you the tools right there to process the feeling and the emotion. Otherwise, what happens if you're not processing the emotion, you're either in fight, flight, or freeze. So you're running, you're hiding, you're numbing, or you're distracting yourself, which means you're not selling. So we want to come to those coaching calls to manage our emotions. And I'm going to be offering several group breathwork sessions, which is one of my favorite ways to transcend and true to release emotions. And you will also have the recordings available for that as well. All right. So total cost again, $4,000 head over to permission to profit.group. You can book a free consult with me now today. If you do this within 72 hours, so today's January 18th. If you book a consult within 72 hours and you end up, or you decide, I'm just going to sign up right now. I'm in, I'm all in. I'm going to go to the, the page. I'm going to sign up. I'm going to get my payment in. You will also get this bonus. This bonus is my online course. It's a DIY course, do it yourself course. It's called Manifest Abundance Now. It is a 30 day program that's all about manifesting. So you can use those recordings, you can use those practices as part of your energetic manifesting as you come into the group program and you learn all about sales, all about marketing, and you get live coaching with me to process your emotions. So that bonus is worth $222. It is available for the next 72 hours. If you go and book a consult now, head to permission to profit.group, book a consult or sign up. All right. Any other questions before we hop off today? And if you don't have any questions, here's how we're going to finish. I want you to type in the chat. What is your number one takeaway from today? What's your number one takeaway? What is the thought? It's going to help you move forward. Type it in the chat below. This is how I end every single one of my coaching calls for one-on-one and for group is what is your intentional thought? What is your takeaway? How are you going to move forward with this in your business? Finding enoughness at all stages says Aaron. Hell yes. Fence says, focus on reaching a place of enoughness. Yes, ma'am. That's always what it is. So good. Who else? I'm going to let two more come in and then we'll close it out because I want to be right on time. Ending in the next minute. And the reason why you want to get into this program now is because this enoughness is a concept to you right now, Right. It is a vibration that you maybe have never accessed. So over the course of six months, you will be in the energy of enoughness because I've reached it and I have a can vibrationally hold it and then I can guide you through it. So a lot of times we're trying to reach enoughness and we've been trying for so long, we never feel it. The reason why you want to be in this program for six months is so that you can be in the energy of enoughness. You can be in the energy of celebration because enoughness and celebration is what creates your momentum. And then when you have the solution, right? Sometimes we get stuck up against some things and then we don't know why it's not working. When you can figure out why it's not working and solve it and then take immediate action, you're able to double your revenue so much quicker. So all of those of you who are seeking enoughness, I want to invite you to come into this program. Join us. We start on January 30th. Head to permission to profit.group. If at the very least, come to get on a consult call with me so we can talk about your specific business and talk about those plans. Those of you who are here who are my current clients or past clients, thank you for being here and offering your support and love. We're going to do so much great work in 2024. We got this. Those of you who are in the program, I will see you soon on our bonus call. Those of you who are about to join the program, I will see you shortly on a consult call. 
All right. Bye, everybody. Have a great day. I will talk to you soon.